very beginning of the class movement in the United States.
just to keep the pressure in here. Marvin, so welcome to Australia. Um, obviously there's a lot we could talk about, but why don't we start by talking about the, the actual process. It's quite physical, there's a, there's a big team involved, uh, and that takes a lot of coordination. And on top of that, you're trying to realise your, your own ideas and translate that through. Um, how do you manage that? Well, I uh, began working with glass in the very, very beginning of the glass movement in the United States. I was one of the first students of the Harvey Little Teacher. And very fortunately, I was hired by the University of California in Berkeley to start the second glass program in, in the country. When I built the equipment and started teaching, I realized that I was a one-person department. And we had very little information and very little skill in the beginning. Uh, Harvey Littleton barely knew how to glow glass, and that's what he taught the rest of us. The other glass processes were, were uh, not known because we were, had our hands full just trying to blow a little bubble. 
work with, with a furnace. So I started very early on uh, looking towards Europe. The, the states didn't have a, a strong tradition in glass, and but but as most of us know, Europe, Europe has a strong tradition. So I went early to Sweden and, uh, and some other countries, uh, just looking around, meeting people, and uh, learning learning what they do and how they work in the factories. My interest and Harvey's interest in the very beginning was to use glass as an artist's material. And we taught ourselves how to blow glass uh, individually. We didn't try to work in a team situation. In fact, the team, as it is done in, in the industrial uh, design in the factories, was something that we uh, sort of uh, didn't uh, look closely to because we wanted to, we wanted to make the artists making glass. Uh, but later on, yeah, through my uh, my travels and, and through, I had an opportunity to work in a, in, a, in, a, in a glass factory. The very first factory I worked in was the Blanco Glass Factory in Milton, West Virginia, where uh, Joel Philip Myers was the designer at that time. He had just started. And I had just started, and we became friends, and I went there to work. And after the workers uh, finished their shift, we uh, went into the factory in the late afternoon and made some glass uh, together. I actually exhibited that glass in New York City at the uh, uh, American Crafts Museum. I had a, 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 one of my very early shows with the pieces that we, that we made there. Uh, so it was, it was very primitive, it was very in the very beginning. So that my interest in factories and I saw it. Uh, then I had an opportunity. Uh, uh, I was invited by Sieber, Sieber Valkema to come to the Rietveld Academy and to teach for him. I had a sabbatical from the university and, and he asked me to, to uh, take over his classes for a few weeks because he was very busy uh, in the administrative policies of the school. And while I was there, they introduced me to the Leardown factory, and I was invited to come to the factory and work. Uh, see, uh, uh, Will Heeson uh, asked me to work like the Americans do, by myself. But I saw this wonderful master, Van der Linden, and I thought that I wanted to try to have a feeling of what the designers uh, do in, uh, in the factories, and I wanted to work with a master the very first time, not blowing glass myself. Because that's quite different, isn't it? To, to work individually in a studio, coming out of that American philosophy of, of self-taught, right. which is what you had available, and yes. then going to Europe. And, and you were one of the key people to, to build those bridges with the European communities and bring that knowledge back. Well, I, I was I was an early person to do it. I had no idea what I was doing. I was just, that was my interest. And I saw the opportunities. And uh, so I wanted to experience this tradition. And I, I, I loved it. I thought it was really great. I uh, uh, working with him. I had to do drawings, and I had to present him something to do. And my drawings uh, were very loose, and he was very used to having you know, mechanical drawings and doing exactly to the millimeter what was wanted. And every time I had a, a wavy line, he tried to reproduce that wavy line, and I said, "Oh well, it's no, it's all right. It, you can." You don't have to reproduce it, and that was my first experience working with a master, and it was a great experience. And it, was a, it, was, it was a really great, great time. What year was that? That was 1970. Wow. And from there, I went to uh, uh, later on. I went to Finland, invited by Kai Frank to work with the, uh, the students at the uh, design school, actually called the Anthenaeum at that time. And uh, I was introduced to. Uh, uh, Kai Franken met me at a, a, a World Craft Council meeting in Dublin, Ireland, uh, where we were blowing glass in a small furnace. And he uh, said, asked, could you do that in, in, in Finland? And of course, being a young American pioneer could do anything. I said, of course I could. So he invited me to come up in the winter. That was the December of that year. And I went to, uh, to Finland. We built a little furnace and blew glass. And then the students went up to the glass factory to work on it just before Christmas. So it was a vacation time. 
And I had been there for two or a couple days before that, working with the, with, with the, with the, with the workers. Uh, and they gave me a, a, a team to work with just for a few hours. And I um, worked, someone opened and closed the mold, a young boy. But I, I didn't feel comfortable. I wanted to, to handle those things. What I had done was gone out to the back of the factory and had thrown away all their used molds and all the things that weren't uh, acceptable in the factory. And I brought them all back in and, and reassembled them and did things. And we started blowing into these uh, par partial molds. And then I, I uh, developed uh, working, uh, 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 working, working with uh, 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 the team. And I became the person who opened and closed the mold, and the mold person, the mold mold, and that I controlled the shape of the pieces. So that was my first re uh, really <coughs> experience working as part of the team. Not a designer making the shapes and make, uh, putting the colors into the glass. Um, that involvement <coughs> in the process would be quite different to the European designer approach. Did that cause friction on the floor? Why you, know, you were actually getting involved with the process and being part of the? Design? No, there wasn't any friction, but people were were were, uh, were quite. Uh, uh, they, just, they, they looked at me. They didn't know what I was doing, and the workers didn't quite know what I was doing because they were worse used to working with the designers who told them what to do and they just did it and the designers sometimes even walked away. But uh, uh, I never had any really friction or anything with them. They really was cooperative and they just thought I was odd and strange. <laughs> Didn't take me too seriously. Yeah. Now, um, so that that approach of, of developing a team, and, and how much do you have to uh, get to know a team to, to be to be confident that they understand what your ideas and, and that communication? I mean, it's, 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 you can't just give them a drawing. I mean, it's something you have to work with them. Well, you can, but um, uh, I, I've never done that except for my first experience. Uh, it's important. I, I, I like to have a, a feeling of watching them work, uh, uh, having a day in the factory, just wandering around and seeing what they do in the, in the factory, what, uh, what techniques they use, and how they approach the glass. Then I like to go to go in there and, and, and try to to uh, resolve some of the problems of making glass by taking uh, feelings from the environment, the seasons, the colors. And, uh, and 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 the feeling that I, I get in, and I would work differently in Italy than I would in in, in, in Finland. Uh, I was in Finland uh, uh, just before the winter started uh, approaching, and it was becoming cold. There were little snow flurries uh, sometimes. Uh, the colors had changed, and I tried to in incorporate that in my work. Uh, and I did that in in uh, Japan in Hokkaido. Uh, it was the springtime, and I tried that the flowers were coming out, and Hokkaido, of course, being an island uh, surrounded by the ocean, the blues of the, of the ocean and so forth, I tried to include those colors and, and that in my work, and the little colors of the, of, the, of the spring flowers. So I've done things like that. Sometimes it's successful, so sometimes it, it doesn't quite work as well. But, uh, that's my approach in working in a, in a factory or, or a country. I worked in China also. And um, subconsciously, all I used was, was red. They didn't have many colors in the factory, uh, and there was a, a very nice red, a very strong red. So I, I used this red color and realized later that everything was, was, was deep red. But of course, then I was in uh, red China, and so that uh, sort of worked out in the political side of it. And Australia. What, what about the influences? Well, I tried, to I, 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 we, we've gone to the museums here in, in New South Wales and I've, I've, saw, I've seen some of the original paintings and in the galleries also. And uh, I've been here once before so I've seen a little bit of the landscape and you can only see a little bit at a time. And uh, uh, the ocean, the, uh, the people, uh, and so, what I was thinking of is making an uh, uh, Australian landscape, and I had an opportunity to use some uh, cane, uh, some rods and cane at, at the studio here, and that seemed to have some 
feeling about the landscape of, the, of, of Australia, the linear landscape of Australia. And I tried to use some of the colors and, and then interject us uh, the, the population. Uh, this land that was all Aboriginal at one time, and then the European came and, uh, and pushed the Aboriginal to the uh, to the back country, which was very similar to the to the story in the, in the United States with the indigenous people there, the American Indians. Uh, so I try to incorporate a little bit of that. And it's, it's quite a mixture of people, as it is in where I'm from, in the, in the west coast of, Berkeley, of California, Berkeley, San Francisco. So the uh, the mixing of the of, of the races and the cultures and the people here is, is quite interesting. Uh, and, uh, it makes for it makes for something, something interesting. And what's the plan for the work? Uh, well, I, we'll we'll have an exhibition, and it takes my the, my first step in blowing the glass, working with a team to blow the glass, is just the very first steps, and I work then by myself in my studio to finish the work, cutting, grinding, etc. And I do that totally by myself and in a relaxed atmosphere. Uh, here I want to have an opportunity, uh, time-wise and also uh, equipment, uh, because of the limited equipment, to do that. But I'll try to finish some pieces for, for this exhibition with the, with the group uh, uh, that we're working with.